you know, Tesla's stock is, you know, taking a nosedive, right? <clears throat> and somebody reached out to me and said, hey, you know, are you scared about Tesla? And I said, no, not at all. In fact, I've bought more, a lot more. I just keep, I'm buying it up at, at a re reduced price. And they asked me why. And I said, well, it's really quite simple. Um, you know, Tesla is so far ahead of the competition. Um, and the market just doesn't know it. Um, most of the downward pressure we're seeing right now is just the market being finicky. And some of it's institutional investors punishing them for governance, you know, because of what Elon's doing at Twitter, which, by the way, I think is a good thing. I don't think Elon's done anything wrong at Twitter. I think he got rid of the dead weight. I think he made the company transparent. And I think he restored trust with the public over the way Twitter was operating and informed the rest of the public just how much they're being manipulated with information, communication, and definition, which I'm going to talk about today. Okay. Um, but from a fundamental perspective, I had this conversation at the gym yesterday with a couple of ladies. I think her, one of the ladies' husbands was an engineer and she really spoke the language. Um, I have full self-driving beta on my Tesla now, and I've been using it all over Dallas. So that is, I'm put in the address I'm going to, I click the little full self-driving directional button. And then when I go ahead and start autopilot, the car just drives itself, changes lanes, it turns at all the intersections. And I've been testing it everywhere. Interesting thing, Tesla's insurance, which I have, my insurance rate's gone down because I've been using FSD almost exclusively. I've been letting the car do the driving. So not instead of me, Walker, doing the driving, I'm letting the car do the driving. And I'm just sort of along for the ride. And here, in, and I've been using it now for 10 days or so, because I didn't get the beta until maybe 10 days ago. And um, although I've had full self-driving on autopilot um, or enhanced autopilot, I've had that for six months or whatever. Um, no other car, no other car manufacturer has FSD like Tesla does. And the FSD beta is fucking incredible. I mean, there's just no way around it. Even, even the most complicated intersections where, or, or where the, the lines on the road aren't painted that well, as long as there's a hint, it is incredible how well FSD beta operates. And we are so close. I mean, we're maybe 12 months, 18 months away, 24 months away from all Tesla owners being able to um, essentially lease out their cars to, to drive other people other places. I mean, in terms of technically, technical capability, which is incredible. I mean, and no one else is there. Moreover, Tesla makes more profit per vehicle than any other car company on earth. And factually, in fact, they make more profit per vehicle than any, any car company has since the 70s. Okay. Um, number three, Giga Factory. They have a head start on Giga isn't designed to make cars. It's designed to make anything. And it's fully integrated. And they have the head start on microgrid. And for those, we'll talk about microgrid later in the year. Um, Tesla's integration with solar. So the fact that they have Tesla solar with the power wall plus the, so they, they're not, they're not just doing um, power transmission, but they're doing power generation from homes. Okay. But the big thing is, and here's why Tesla is so valuable. It's and it's not just the, I'm going to stay away from the integration piece. Cause we talk about this, they're full stack integrated top to bottom one ecosystem. Okay from suppliers all the way to consumer. They're, they're, they're a fucking decade ahead of everyone, okay? Tesla has the most valuable IoT sensor in the world. And they have, I don't know if they've got millions of them or whatever, but they've got the most valuable IoT sensor in the world. I don't know how many Teslas are on the road. Josh, look that up. How many Teslas are on the road? Um, and that collects data 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And Tesla's integrated to it and they store the data. So from cameras, from um, accelerometers, um, from microphones, 
um, 2.65 million. So they got 2.65 million IoT sensors on the road right now. Fundamental difference between what Tesla does with their vehicles and all the other manufacturers do is Tesla is connected to the car 24 seven. They're not scheduling over the air updates. They schedule, you can schedule downloads, but they're connected to the car 24 seven. So um, as opposed to, you know, calling into a dial up modem at a specific time during the day, downloading all the data and then analyzing it offline, they're connected while you're on the road, while you're driving, while you're parked. And all that data is stored. It's, it's literally the most valuable IoT sensor on the planet. And the data that t- Tesla collects is the most valuable commodity they have. They use that data to create much, many other valuable things, okay? Like they use that data to create FSD, full self-driving. They're going to use that data to create an application on top of full self-driving that's going to allow you to lease your vehicle out so that people are going to be able to have a Tesla drive them somewhere, Okay. Tesla's so far ahead of everybody. And so all this noise around Tesla, it's just that. It's noise. It's, 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 it's either people unintentionally or intentionally trying to misinform. I don't want to use misinformation. I hate that word. Uh, exactly, Annabelle. Tesla can sell data to cities about where to focus their resources on what roads to maintain. Let's take it one step further. Tesla can sell data to the cities to... Uh, tell them where to build roads and where to tear roads down. Okay. So when it comes to the civil engineering component, but I want to see this Missy Cummings, um, Missy Cummings uh, on LinkedIn. I don't know who she is, but she it's robot robotics and artificial intelligence. She says, you go look her up, Missy Cummings. She said, I want to address Adam Kovicevich's recent article. And she links it in this post. And she says, you know, he is so wrong on so many levels. The only thing holding back self-driving car widespread deployment is the inability of companies to effectively deploy safe software that can perform consistently and cope with everyday uncertainty. All companies can deploy 2,500 self-driving cars on the road today. They are struggling to get to even 10%. And, And Missy's wrong here. Not all companies can because they don't have the technological infrastructure to do so. If you look at the way that Tesla collects data. I was explaining this to a guy I went on the cruise with. The fundamental difference between the way Tesla collects data on their cars and a Ford does. Okay. That that is the protocols they're using. So CAN bus and ECM on the Ford side. Okay. Where with edge driven IOT protocols on the MQTT side. So each sensor on the car is essentially a node with its own brain. And, the, and it communicates into infrastructure on a Tesla. On a Ford, you have a, a master control module that turns on the ground and collects the data from the sensor in a pull response mechanism. Okay. Ford doesn't have the infrastructure, the technical infrastructure on their vehicles to achieve the performance of full self-driving that Tesla has. Now, the reason I pick on Ford is because I and I and I pick on GM and I could pick on a lot of people. I think Volvo's ahead of the game and Volkswagen is clearly ahead of the game. Okay. Volkswagen's the is of all the legacy manufacturers, they're ahead of everybody. Okay. But they're still not at Tesla's level. She's wrong there. Not everybody can deploy safe and reliable. Tesla can, and it started with right strategy, right technology, right partners. Fully integrated partners was their focus, by the way. So she says, when one company can get to 1,250 deployed self-driving vehicles with no serious injuries or fatalities per the NHTSA's SGO, and that company is not causing mayhem across the city when those cars inevitably break down, that will be the time to push, to start pushing for more exemptions. There are many reasons to be concerned about China, but using China baiting to push an ill-informed self-driving car agenda only significantly undermines our ability to address real issues on the international stage. People in Pennsylvania and insurance companies and lawyers need to watch the NHTSA, ADS, SGO results carefully. It is a look into their future. I can tell you this. Most of the people who read that don't drive a Tesla that has full self-driving. I have one. Okay. 
and I and I know a lot and a member of Tesla clubs and I talked a lot to Tesla owners. What is being communicated here does not line up with the experience I have had or the the conversations I have with the people who who drive Teslas. So I make my decision based on that information and I don't allow her to gaslight me. <laughs> OK, um, I don't allow her to tell me that what I'm experiencing is not true. OK. Um, all right. Which brings me to the second point, which has to do with uh, information, communication, definition. So Luke Small, who we've interviewed here before, um, who I have immense respect for. So I don't want anyone to take anything I say here is like, I don't think Luke knows what he's doing or, you know, I, I have a lot of respect for Luke. And Luke and I agree, we're, if you were, we were to create a Venn diagram of our, our strategies and beliefs and values and stuff, we're probably, I'd say 90% congruent. I put a bigger premium on the importance of getting technology right than Luke does. And I would say that's probably the only difference. You know, we're both human focused. We're, you know, we both believe digital transformation about human. But he, he, he had a LinkedIn post a couple of weeks ago where he said, is it just me or is Industry 4.0 too focused on technology? For me, the fourth industrial revolution, aka the digital transformation of manufacturing, will happen at the intersection of disruptive tech and market trends. So what he's arguing is that market, the market will drive what we do with the disruptive tech. That's what he's arguing. Okay. Some of which themselves come from tech. Industry 4.0 in its current form will provide the tech and then we'll have to look at each industry vertical individually to track the prevailing market trends. You can then map digital transformation use cases at the intersection of each. Simple. As a thought experiment a year ago, I mapped automotive under a few headings from each category. And in July this year, BMW proved me right in at least one intersection when they announced their automated driving in-plant AFW project. Where else do you think I hit the marker was way off in my thought experiment? Now, I I commented on this, so let me go to it. So I, um, and I said, you know, technology centric is important and foundational. Um, it all starts with the art of the possible, a new series that we've been working on since August. Iterations, use cases extend from the art of the possible and I suspect market trends will certainly drive some choices. I do think it's important to note that Industry 4.0 is yielding the highest returns at the intersection of automating business decisions while making data the primary commodity in any organization. And what I'm saying is, is that foundationally, from a strategic perspective, what we're doing is with, with the, this technical infrastructure we create, where digital data becomes our primary commodity, we are automating business decisions. Things like we're automating the scanning of a, of a barcode. We're automating the decision on how to adjust the schedule so that we maximize the raw materials that we have in house, our change over times, right? We're automating business decisions, but we have to start with the right strategy and the right technology and the right partners. We have to start with the strategy and the technical infrastructure. What I'm saying is, is that if you look at where most companies are yielding the highest returns, it's not in the places where they thought they would. In fact, we, we make this argument all the time that when you start your digital transformation engagement, that first digital transformation iteration, that first 12, month, 12 weeks where we're putting in the infrastructure, creating a unified namespace, we're aggregating all of our data, we're using edge-driven report by exception lightweight, and then we're building some solution. We're solving a business problem on top of that. If you were to ask the organization, give me the 10 things you think we're going to do over the next three years, they're not going to do nine of them. Because at the end of the first 12 weeks, just through by virtue of automating business decisions, we learned more about the company through our digital data. And we realized what we thought are our problems are not our problems. The same thing happens in the market. When I, what's amazing thing to me, what is amazing to me is that when, if you were to ask people 10 years ago, how important would it be for your car to be able to drive itself? The vast majority of people in the market are going to say, I don't want full self-driving. I don't trust a car to drive me. Okay. If we allowed the market to dictate that, that choice, we probably don't develop full self-driving. 
if you allowed the market to dictate electrical cars, we wouldn't have had it either. It took transformative leadership from Elon Musk to say, hey, we are we have a bigger goal here of sustainability for humanity. And one of those steps is electric vehicles. Now, everyone's going to argue, hell, oh, you know, the mining process and blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter. It, 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 all that's true. You're front ending, you're, you're, you're front loading the carbon footprint on an electrical vehicle, but you're still carbon neutral by 60,000 miles and you're never carbon neutral in an internal combustion engine. Okay. So the point is, is that it took transformative leadership, not market demand for Tesla to make the decisions they made. Okay. So what I finished with was I do, um, Innovation advances exponentially, which is why those who are late to the game are struggling to st even stay on the field. I'm talking to you, Target, Walmart, GM, and Ford. Earlier this week, I used AI to create, from scratch, a 60-second video from 21 video clips and five still images. It took 30 seconds to create the perfect video, one that would have taken an editor hours or days. Data as a primary commodity made that possible. Okay. Okay. I didn't know that I needed artificial intelligence to edit a video for me. What happened was by opting into a digital infrastructure, that became a possibility I wasn't aware of. Okay. And so, yes, is the technology important? You bet your ass it is. 